Hey guys, you are welcome back to my YouTube channel, Vlog Academy. Um, in today's video, we are going to be treating linear programming, and the method that we are going to be using is simplex method of solving linear programming problem. Now, this is the question that we are going to be solving, and if you want to proceed to solve this question, the first thing to do is to change this objective function and the constraints to uh, standard form by introducing a slack variable. Slack variable uh, is introduced to absorb those resources that are not used in the course of the production process. So that's what I'm going to be doing that now. If you want to convert this, also don't forget the, uh, the numbers of slack variable that you are going to be introducing will depend on the constraint that you have. Are you getting it? The numbers of uh, the numbers of slack variable that you are going to be introducing largely depend on what the numbers of constraints that you have. Of course, I'm having here two constraints. We have this is the constraint one, the function, and this is the constraint two, the function. So, my max, uh, my objective function will become like this: z is equals to ten x one, ten x one plus six x two plus zero x three plus zero x four. So by doing this, I've already changed this to what to standard form. Now let's then proceed to the constraints. Now, if you want to change this to standard form, you are going to be having for the constraint. Don't forget this is the objective function. So I'm doing that for the constraint right now. 4x1, 4x1 plus 5x2 plus for the first constraints. The value, the first value of your slack variable will be one. The coefficient of your slack variable will be one. For the first constraint, this is the first constraint. Don't forget, this is the first constraint, and this is what the second constraint. For the first constraint, the coefficient of your slack variable will be one. So I'm going to be having one x here, then plus zero x four. That's it. This constraint and um, this slack variable belongs to the first constraint. That is the reason why you cannot assume a, uh, a neutral um, a neutral figure, a neutral which is zero. So I make it one. Now for the second constraint, the, val the value of the second slack variable will be also one, while other will be zero. That's what I'm going to do now. This is the second constraint. So I'm going to be having 5x1, 5x1 plus 2x2 plus now. For this one, because this is the, this is for the first one, uh, this one is going to take an insignificant which is what zero, zero x three plus. Then for the second one, because this the second slack variable belongs to the second constraint, so this one this one also will assume a significant value which is one. So I'm going to be having one here, one x four. Now, oh, I didn't put uh, twenty. Is equals to twenty? Is equals to twenty. So. I have oh. oh sorry okay so I have changed this to standard form this is the standard form now now the next thing that you are going to be doing after changing this to slack one by introducing your slack variable the next thing that you are going to be doing is to construct your initial simplex table. That's not the first iteration. Construct your initial uh, simplex table. Now, the, this is how the simplex. Okay, this is our uh, simplex, uh, uh, simplex table, initial simplex table. So we have the resource, which is the inputs. Don't forget this, the inputs. Then we have the real activity level. We have the real variable, which are the variable that we have here. This variable, we have variable x1 and variable x2. This is this, and we have the slack variable that we introduce in the course of the production process to absorb the resources that is left out, and we have the function and the ratio. On our uh, on the column side, on the, under the resource, we have the slack variable in here, and we have the zj, and we have the pj minus zj. The pj. Let me start by saying that the pj is the coefficient of the variable x and x1, x2, x3, and x4 in our standard objective function. So I'm going to be writing here now. For x1, the coefficient is 10, so I'm going to be putting 10 here. And for x2, the coefficient is 6. I'm going to be putting 6 here. And for x3, the coefficient is 0. And for x4, the coefficient is what? Uh, also 0. So 0, 
So that is the value. That's how I got my PG. The coefficient of x1, x2, and x3. The coefficient of our variable um, in the standard objective function. So now let's proceed with our calculation. And if you look at this variable, we have x1 and x2. Go back to your standard constraints and uh, standard. Um, if you look at you know, our standard constraint and um, oh god. Okay, now let us proceed. Uh, the coefficients of x1. The coefficient of x1 in this place is 4. So I'm going to be writing 4 in this place. The coefficient of x2 is what? 5. Why the coefficient of x theory? x theory, which is the slack variable, is 1. Have you seen it? 1. Then the coefficient of x4 in this um, the first constraint is uh, 0. So that's the, that's the first thing. Let's go, let's come back to the second constraint. The coefficient of x1 in the second constraint is 5. So I'm going to be writing 5 here. 5. The coefficient of x2 in the second constraint is 2. The coefficient of x3 is 0. And that for x4 is 1. So now after getting this, we are going to get our key elements. And that's what I'm going to be showing you now. We need our key elements. And we cannot get our key elements without first finding our key row and key column. The element that intercepts both lines is known as the key element. Now let's proceed to get our key elements. If you want to get the key elements, you first have to locate, you not O, sorry, you must first get our key column. And if you want to get the key column, let's proceed. It will be the highest value of your pj minus zj. Now, how do we get the value of zj? That's what I'm going to be calculating now. Don't forget that the coefficient of x theory, which is the slack variable, the coefficient in, the, in our objective function is what? Zero. So I'm going to be having zero here. And the coefficient of x4 in our objective function, standard objective function to be specified, is what? Zero. So now I have this. If I want to get the value of my zj, if I want to get the value of my zj for this place, if I want to get the value of zj for this place, if I want to get the value of zj here, if I want to get the value, if I want to get the, if I want to get, okay, let me start by, let me start from this. If I want to get the value of zj in this place, it will be, this is the, um, this is how I want to get it. Zero, the element here, it will be zj, let me call it zj, let me call it zj of x1 zj of x1 now i just wrote this formula now it will be zero multiplied by what i have here oh i don't put my okay let's go let's proceed zero multiplied by what i have here plus zero multiplied by what i have here now the value of zj for x1 will be zero multiplied by four plus zero multiplied by five so i'm going to be having zero multiplied by four zero into vertex four plus zero into vertex five so that will give me zero. That's it. And zero multiplied by x theory, which is for this, and zero multiplied by x4, which is for this. So that will give me zero. I have zero here. So for the next one, it will be what? Zj x2, which will be zero into bracket. This zero multiplied by, choose it downward, is five. Plus this zero. That's what I have here. Then four choice down is two. So zero into bracket two. That will give me also zero. So I'm going to have what? I'm going to be having zero here. So for the x TV, the value of my zj will also be what? Zero. Because this zero will be what? Negate every every value that is here. So this one will be also zero. And for the x4 will be also what? Zero. So that's how to get this um this go, which is the which is the um zj. Now let's proceed to get the value of our pg minus zj. To get the value of pj minus zj, you have your pj here. The first pj is what's 10. Let me move this. Let me move this. So the first pj is 10. 10 minus 0 will give me 10. Then 10 minus 10 minus 0 will give me 10. 6 minus 0 will give me 6. And then 0 minus 0 is also 0. And this one is also what? 0 minus 0 is also 0. So now you are getting the value of your pj minus zj the the next thing to do is to look at this pj minus zj which one is of the highest value 
that is the code that is the column that you're going to be considering of course the highest value is 10 so let me circle the 10 so that you can see very well the highest value is 10 so this row is my key uh, no this column is my key column you got it you get you understand why i got this the value the highest value of my pg minus zg will be uh, that row will be my um, that column rather that column will be my key column so now i've gotten the key column how do i get the key uh the key row of course this is row and this is column so how do i get my key um key row if i want to get my key row don't forget that the reactivity level for the start um for our standard constraint the, uh, for the first one is what the reactivity level for the first one is 20 so i'm going to have a 20 in this place and the real activity and uh, the real activity level for the second um constraint is also 20 so i'm going to be having 20 in this place so if you want to proceed before getting our key go we have to get our what fraction how do we get our fraction fraction will be 20 this 20 divided by this four every the real activity level divided by the corresponding key row element on um, key column and um, key column element if you if you look at this we have 20 here we are going to be using 4 to divide this 20 to get our fraction. So I'm going to be having 20 divided by 4. 20, 20 all over 4. So I'm going to be having 20 divided by 4 is 5. And for the next one, which is, um, for the next one, which is um, x4. So I'll be dividing 20 by the corresponding key, um, key column element. So I'm going to be having 20 divided by 5. 20 all over 5 is going to give me what? 4. So I have my fraction. I have my fraction ratio. Now, the next thing that I want to take note: if you want to get your key row, you are going to be choosing the lowest positive value in your in your fraction. If you look at this, if you look at this value, I have five here, I have four here. The lowest positive value is four. Therefore, this will be my key row. This will be my key row. This will be my key row. This is my key row. So. That's it. The lowest positive value is 4. So this will be my key row. Now, if you look at this, I have gotten the element that intersects both key row and key element is 5. So my key element is 5. Okay. After getting my key element, the key element is 5. Now I proceed to my, this is my first iteration table. Now I want you to pay attention. Let me start by writing the value of PJ. The PJ is 10, 6, 0, 0. Don't forget, PJ, 10, no, 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 not this place, under X1. PJ is 10, 6, 0, 0, 10, 10, 6, 0, and this one is 0. Now, I've, let me, I've written the value of my PJ. Now, I want you to pay attention here. If you look at, this is my key element. This is the key element. The key element is 5. So I will have to trace this 5. The key element is 5. If I trace this 5 to the top, I'm going to get, um, I'm going to, um, uh, this is the variable. This is this uh, real variable that is there. So I'm going to be interchanging this real variable with this lack variable. Don't forget, this 5 is my key element. I will trace it to the top. The real variable that is there will be interchanged with the slack corresponding slack variable. If I trace this uh, key element, which is 5 to the top, this is my real variable here. If I trace it to the um, left hand side, this uh, x4 is my slack variable. So by after getting this, I'm going to be interchanging this x1, which is the real variable, with the slack variable. So instead of having slack variable in this place, I'm going to have real variable. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's what I'm trying to say. If you want to get this now, this one will not change because we don't have any key elements. We can only have only one key element. So the key element is fine. So I'm going to be interchanging the real variable, which is x1, with the slack variable, which is x4. So let's trace. And this, this one will not change. So I'm going to have 0x3 also, 0x3. And since x4 will change, if you come back to our standard objective function, the coefficient of x, um, x3 Okay, is it x3? No, no, no. The coefficient of x1 is 10. So I'm going to be having 10x1. 10x1. So the coefficient of x1 is 10. So I've already interchanged this. Instead of having 0x4 here, I'm going to have, we are going to be writing 0, um, 10x1. Now let's proceed with our calculation. Don't forget that we have to look for the value of zj in this also. And we have to find the value of pj minus zj. Now, 
we go up to this place. Now, the next thing that you are going to be doing is to divide your key elements. Di make your key element one by dividing the total row with your key element. This is what I mean. You know, pipe is your key element when you are solving. The, if you want to make the total, if you want to make pipe one with respect to the element that is in the rows which five belong, what you are going to be doing is that we are going to be dividing each row by five. So I'm going to be having five divided by five. My new element, my new value will now be five divided by five, which is one under x1 now. Five divided by five is one. Then two divided by five will be two over five. Two all over five. Then zero divided by um, zero divided by five will be zero. And one divided by five will be one all over five. That's it. I have make my key element one with respect to the element in the rows. So now let's proceed to getting let's let's get the real value for our um slash variable zero x to me. I will give you a formula. That's the formula that you are going to be using to get that you are going to use to get our key element. Okay, okay, for the real activity. Oh. For this little activity, I will have 20 divided by 5. 20 divided by 5 will give me 4. 20 divided by 5. 20 divided by 5 will give 4. Yes. 20 divided by 5 will give me 4. So now let's proceed to calculate the real value of um of this piece. Let me roll a line also here. Put a line. Here also. So let me put a line here also. So now let's proceed to calculate our real value for um, the first value of x1 under this. Don't forget that the old value is 4. The old value under x till x1 is 4. This is the formula I'm saying. New value will be equal to new value. New value is equal to old value. Old value minus corresponding key row element corresponding key row element multiplied by corresponding key column element column corresponding key column element all over key element That's the formula I'm saying. What do I mean? This is what I mean. New value that you're going to be inserting here will be the old value which you have here already. Old value of each element which you have here already minus the corresponding key row element. If you look at 4 now, let's assume that I want to get the real value of 4 in this place. I want to get the real value of 4 in this place. What do I do? What I'm going to do is to the old value of the old value is 4. I'm going to be inserting 4 here, 4 minus the corresponding row element, the corresponding key row element is 5, don't forget, the corresponding key row element under 4 is what, 5, so I'm going to be having minus 5 multiplied by, also the corresponding key column element is also 4 again, <laughs> are you getting it please, I, want, I don't want you to make a mistake, don't get me wrong. The old, the new value of four. I want to get the new value of four. I told you that the formula is old value minus corresponding key row element multiplied by corresponding key row element divided by our key element itself. So I want to get the new value of four, which is what four, four minus the corresponding key row element is what five. I put it here. Mm, multiplied by the corresponding key column element. The corresponding key col the key column element. Is also what is also five is four is four all over five. So if you if you punch your calculator, you are going to get zero. Five multiplied by four is what twenty. Twenty divided by five is four. Four minus four will be what zero. So the um x the value of this will be what zero. Now let's proceed to get the um, the real value of the real value of uh, the real value of five. 
I've gotten the real value of 4, which is 0. Now let's proceed to get the real value of 5. You are going to use this 5 minus the corresponding key row elements. The corresponding, don't forget, this is root and this is colon. So the corresponding key row element is 4. 4 multiplied by the corresponding key column element is what? 2. So 4 multiplied by 2. 4 multiplied by 2. All over. The key element is 5. So I'm going to have in 4 multiplied by 2 over 5. That is what? 4 times 2 is 8. 5 minus 8 over 5 will give me 25 minus 8 all over 5. 25 minus 8 is 17. So I'm going to be having the new value of x2 and the new value of 5 will be what? 17 over 5. 17 over 5. So let's proceed to get the new value of x3. It's also follow the same approach. The new value of x3 will be the old value. It will be the old value, which is 1. The old value is 1. 1 minus the old value, which is 1, minus the key row element. The key row element is what? 4. The key, the key row element is 4. When you choose it, you got here, is 4. Multiply by the key column element is 0. Multiply by 0. All over the key element, which is 5. So all over 5. So 4 times 0 is 0. 0 over 5 is 0. 1 minus 0 is also 1. So that's it. So let's proceed to get the new value of 4. The new value of x4, which is 0, it will be 0, we just substitute 0 here, 0 minus the key row element is 4, we also have 4 here, the key, the key column element is 1, so 0 minus 4 times 1 divided by the key element, which is what, uh, 5, so 0 minus 4 times 1 is 4, so that will give me minus 4, all over what, minus 4 all over 5, so now I've gotten my, I've, got, I've gotten the new value of the, Variable. Okay, it remains the new value of this real activity. It is 20. The old value is 20. Let me erase this. The old value is 20. And we have old value minus the key row element. The key row element is 4. So the key row element is 4. Into bracket 4 multiplied by the key column element is 20. 4 multiplied by 20. All over 20. You got it right. Old value minus the key row element. Then minus, uh, multiply by the key column element. Divided by what? 5. Uh, no, 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 sorry. The key element is 5. Sorry. It will be 5. So, 20 multiplied by 4 will give me 80. 80 divided by 5. That will give me 16. 20 minus 16. 20 minus 16, that will be 4. Yeah, that will be 4. So, the new value, the new value for this is 4. The new value is 4 because when you, if you solve this, you are going to get the uh, 4 as your value. So, now let's proceed with our calculation. Let's proceed with our calculation. So now I've gotten the um, all the variables, um, all the activities, the variables and the select variables, the new one. So now let's proceed to get our ZJ and ZJ. Don't forget that ZJ, ZJ is gotten by addition of this plus this. Okay, now let's proceed to get the value of our ZJ. To get, we are going to start from this place. We don't need the ZJ of this because this is where our ZJ value starts. So, we are going to get the ZJ of this. How do we get the ZJ of this um, of this column? The ZJ of this column is equal to 0 into bracket, this 0 into bracket, x dB. The value of x in that column is what? 0 plus 10, this 10 into bracket, 10 into bracket. What is the value of x, x in that column? The value of x is 1. So the ZJ of this column is what? 0 plus 10. 0 plus 10. So the value of the ZJ is 0 plus 10 and that gives us 10. Now let's proceed to get the ZJ of this column also. If you want to get the ZJ of this column, it will be 0 multiplied by the uh, element in the column. That will be 0 into bracket 17 divided by 5. So 0 uh, multiplied by 17 divided by 5 will give us 0 plus 10 multiplied by 10 into bracket. The value of um, element in that column is also 2 over 5. 10 multiplied by 2 over 5. So 0 multiplied by 17 over 5 will give me 0. Why 10 multiplied by 2 over 5 will give me 20 all over 5. 20 over 5. Of course, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So the value of ZJ in this place is 4. Now let's proceed to get the value of ZJ of this column. 0 multiplied by 1 will give me 0. 10 multiplied by 0 will give me 0. So this value of ZJ is 0. Um, 0, we get the value of the ZJ of this column also. 0 multiplied by 4 will give me 0. Why 10 multiplied by 1 over 5 will give me 10 over 5, which is, which is equal to 2. 
So, okay. The next thing is to calculate the PJ value minus ZJ. The PJ value in this space is 10. 10 minus 10 will give me 0. That's it. Then the PJ minus ZJ, the PJ is what? 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. Then, for the next one, 0 minus 0 will give me 0. And 0 minus 2 will give me minus 2. So, we have not gotten our optimal solution. We have not gotten our optimal solution. Because we still have... Um, for we to attain an optimal solution, we must this pj minus zj must be less than or equals to zero. That is for optimal solution for optimal for optimal solution for optimal solution pj pj minus zj must be less than or equals to what zero. For we to say that we have already obtained optimal solution, the value of pj minus zj must be equals to must be less than or equals to zero but the value here if you look at i have zero here i have positive two here i have zero here i have negative two here therefore this value we have i still have the positive value that is greater than zero here so which is two so since i have i uh, since the since two is the value that is greater than here so therefore the my key row and uh, my key column rather my key column will be uh this column because the value the highest value of pj minus zj is 2 so therefore my key column is x2 this column that is 17 over 5 and 2 over 5 that is my key column now you have to find the key ego so that we can determine our key elements but in order to find the key ego i have to find the fraction or ratio first so that's what i'm going to be doing now don't forget that in order to find the fraction or ratio we are going to be dividing the element in uh the element in the key column divided by the corresponding real activity that is four if you check here i have four here so i'm going to be dividing 17 over um, four divided by 17 over five that will be my um the value of what i'm looking for four divided by 17 over five i will have the fraction and the ratio here then i will have another one two divided by four two over five divided by um, four divided by two over five then i will have my ratio in this place, I have a real activity as 4, and the corresponding element in the key column is 17 over 5. So I'm going to be having 4, 4, 4 divided by 17 over 5. So I can represent this as this 4 divided by 17 over 5. If I said 4 over 1, this division sign will change to multiplication sign. So this denominator will come to the numerator. So I will have something like 5 all over 17 also. So 4 times 5 is 20. So I'm going to be having 20 all over 17. So the value of this fraction in this place is 20 all over 17. So I'm going to have 20, 20 all over 17. 20 over 17. So I've already gotten the ratio of this. Now let's proceed to get the ratio of um, this second one. It's, all, it's also followed the same procedure. I'm going to be dividing my real activity divided by the corresponding element in the key column. So I'm going to be having 4 divided by 2 over 5. 4, let me put it there. 4, 4 divided by 2 all over 5. Don't forget that I can write it as over 1. So 4 divided by 2 over 5. 4, if I change this division sign to multiplication sign, 5 will, 5 will come up. So I'm going to be having 4 over 1 multiplied by 5 all over 2. 4 times 5 is, uh, 5 times 4 is 20. So 20, um, 20 divided by 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So I, I'm going to be having 10, 10 in there. So the... The ratio here, the ratio here will be 10. So I have my ratio as this. Now, how do I determine my key column from the previous video that I dropped on the channel? I told you that if you want to determine your key row, the least positive value in your ratio, that row will be your key row. The least positive value in your ratio, that row will be your key row. Now, if you look at this, 20 over 17 is uh, less than and 10 and they are both positive so my uh the row whereby 20 over 17 fails to 
that will be my key goal and that's what i'm going to be circling i i will have to circle from this place hmm. so this is my this is my key column and this is my key row so the element that intersects both key row and key column this element is 17 over 5 so my key element is now 17 over 5 then put it down key elements the key element the key element the key element here is now 17 17 all over 5 the key element now is 17 over 5 so um i can proceed to the second iteration like that i can proceed to the second iteration of course if i want, i have to get the new value for my second iteration so i'm going to be having another word another table this is my new table this is the second iteration let me put it there second iteration second second iteration this is the second iteration so now let me put something so this is the second iteration. Now let's proceed. Uh, don't forget that our key element is 17 over 5. The element that intersects both the key row and the key column when I draw the line. So the element is 17 over 5. So the key element is 17 over 5. Now let us label our table. This is how the table will look like. All this table that we have here. Don't forget that I told you that our key element is our key element is this, which is 17 over 5. So now we want to get the value of x okay there is one thing to do there is there will be something one variable will leave the will leave this column and another another variable will enter if you look at this the column which the key column um the column which the key element is 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 pointing to two when i trace it like this it's pointing to two so therefore x2 will be substituted in this place and x0 x3 will leave this place so i'm going to be having in this place let me balance this zero um zero x3 will be leaving so x2 the column which the key element pointed to the key element by the b is just trade it off and it is also x2 so therefore the um the value um the value of your variable or the key column will, so that will be the um the value that will be entering so x and um, zero x3 will be leaving so i'm going to be having an um, x2 i'm going to be having x2 here x2 and don't forget that in our objective function, the previous one that I showed you, the uh, the value of x2 in our standard objective function is 6. So I'm going to be having 6x2. So therefore, I'm going to be having 6x2. Now, in order to get the real activity level, since this is my key element, I'm going to be dividing all this row. I'm going to be dividing all this row by the key element. So therefore, I'm going to be having something like um, 4 divided by 17 over 5. 4 divided by 17 over 5, that will give me uh, 4 divided by 17. Let me put it here. 4 divided by 17 all over 5 will give me 4 multiplied by 5 over 17. So I'm going to be having 20 all over 17. 20 over 17. So this is 20 over 17. The real activity here becomes 20 all over 17. So for the next one, for the x1, I have zero. So zero divided by zero divided by twenty. I'm going to change this to zero. Zero divided by seventeen over five will give me zero. So this one is zero. And for the x two, seventeen over five divided by seventeen over five. Yes, I'm going to divide by itself. So seventeen over five divided by seventeen over five. Seventeen over five divided by seventeen over five. If the division sign changes to multiplication, um, this uh, this will change. So I'm going to be having 17 over 5 multiplied by 5 all over 17. So this will cancel this. We make one. This is one. This and this is one. Therefore, I'm going to be having one here. Now uh, the real value of uh, x three. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to divide this one. One divided by. Okay, one divided by. Let me put this down so that you will not be confused. 1 divided by the key the key element is 17 over 5 so 17 over 5 if i change this sign to multiplication sign i'm going to have 1 multiplied by 5 all over 17 
one will draw a pipe over 17 is 5 over 17. So the new value that will be on this S3 instead of this one, the new value will become 5 over 17. 5 all over 17. So now for the X4, for the X4 here, for the X4, I have 4 over 5 as the old value. If I want to get the new value, I'm going to be having 4 all over 5 divided by the key element is 17 over 5 so i'm going to be having 17 all over 5. if i change this sign to multiplication sign don't forget that the numerator will come to the denominator for the other side so i'm going to be having 5 all over what, 17. 5 divided by this and 5 divided by this 4 times 1 will be what 4 so i'm going to be having 4 over 17. so the the, the new value for this will be 4 over 17 4 divided by 17. Right now, I've gotten the new value for the first row. Don't forget, the reason why I put six here is that when you check our the standard, uh, the standard objective function is six, um, ten x one, and the coefficient of x two in standard object objective function is six. So I have to put six here. If the coefficient is four, I'm I'm going to put four here. So therefore, don't be confused that I put six here. And also, the reason why I have to I have to divide. Um, my key and um, the row which the key element fails to, I have to divide by the key element itself because I want to make my key element one. Therefore, I have to divide it by itself. And if I divide it only by itself, uh, it will it will, it will change the question. Therefore, I have to divide all the row by the key element so that when I multiply it, I will also resort to the answer. So I've not done anything. Now let's get a new value for second row, which is ten. So I'm having this one here, ten x i. 10x, 10x, and yeah. so let's proceed to get our new value for the 10x. And don't forget that in my previous video, the part one of this linear programming for uh, problem, I dropped a question that I drop a formula like this that is new value, new value. Let me shorten this so that you understand. New value, new value is equals to old value, old value. New value is equal to old value minus the product of corresponding key row. Corresponding key row. Corresponding key row. Corresponding key row elements. Multiply by corresponding corresponding key column key column elements. All over key elements. Key elements so now this is the formula that i'm going to be using to get the real value of this don't make the mistake you only divide the row where your key element is by the key element not the you won't you have to divide the second row with the key element you, you won't get the real value like that the real value is getting by using this formula so therefore don't be confused now don't if you want to get the real value for four the new value for four now will become the new value will be so if i want to get the new value for four four itself will become the whole value so i'm going to be having in this place let me erase this formula let me erase this formula now the real value for four will be new value for four let me, let me have new value i will have the whole value which is for itself four four minus the product what is the product of uh, the key row element the corresponding key row element that is the element that falls under the key row that correspond to four when i choose it it is this four so i'm going to be having four minus four old value minus the key row element multiplied by the corresponding key column element what the key column element that correspond to four to this value is what two over five yeah it is two over five so i'm going to be having multiplied by two all over five now i've already multiplied this now what's my key element the key element is what 17 over five so i'm going to be having divided all over 17 all over 5 now if you multiply this you want to calculate this let's solve it gently you put this 4 minus 4 minus 4 multiplied by 2 is 8 so i'm going to be having 8 all over 5 divided by 17 over 5 17 over 5 8 all over 5 divided by 17 over 5. If this division sign changes to multiplication, this 5 will come to the numerator and 17 will go to what? The numerator. So I'm going to be changing it. Um, 5, I'm going to be having 5 multiplied by 5 all over 17. 
Now, the this one, this this will go with this. This will cancel this. So I'm going to what I'm left with is four minus eight over seventeen. Four minus eight all over seventeen. Four minus four minus eight all over seventeen. Four minus eight over seventeen. If you find the LCM, the LCM is seventeen. So don't forget there is one. Now seventeen divided by one, that is seventeen. Seventeen multiplied by four is sixty-eight. So 68 uh, 60. I'm going to have a 68 here 68 this minus sign minus 17 divided by 17 that's 1 1 multiplied by 8 will be what? 8 so I'm left with what? 68 minus 8 will give me 60 so I'm, I'm left with 60 over 17 so the new value uh, the new value of this 4 is what? 60 over 17 so I'm going to be having 60 all over 17 here please don't be confused the formula that i wrote for you earlier in the previous video that's the formula i'm still using if i want to get the new value of 4 the new value of 4 will be this 4 itself which is the whole value subtracted by the corresponding key color and corresponding key go the, if you trace this up you will see that it is 4 that is here so the corresponding key go element is what 4 Corresponding, corresponding key element is 4. So multiply by the corresponding key column. When I trace it here, the corresponding key column is what? 2 over 5. Please don't be confused. Now, I've, got, I've gotten 2 over 5. That is what? Then divided by the key element, then you proceed with your calculation. You are going to result into 60 over 17. Now, let's get the, uh, the key, uh, the real, the new value for 1. So that's what I'm still going to be doing. The new value for 1. Let us follow the same approach. The new value for 1 now will be 1, 1 itself, which is the old value. The new value for this one, 1 minus what? Old value minus the corresponding, the corresponding key, the corresponding key row element is 0. So I'm going to be having 0 multiplied by the corresponding key column element is 2 over 5. So multiply by 2 all over 5, 2 over 5 uh, divided by the key element is 17 over 5. Divided by 17 over 5. So, if you divide the 0, multiply by 2 over 5, you will give me 0. So, 0 divided by 17 over 5 is you give me 0. So, 1 minus 0 is what? 1. So, the new value will be what? 1. Let's proceed with our calculation. If I want to get the new value for the... <laughs> if I want to get the new value for this 2 over 5 itself, it will be the 2 over 5 itself, which is the whole value. New value for 2 over 5 will be new value is equals to 2 over 5 will be 2 the, the old value which is 2 over 5 minus the product of the corresponding key go elements. The corresponding key element on 2 over 5 is what? 17 over 5. 17 over 5 multiply by the corresponding key column element itself. It's uh, uh, the two over five itself is the corresponding key column element. So I'm I'm still going to be having what's two over five in a divided by uh, key element itself. So I'm having I'm going to be having seventeen over five. So if I calculate this, the result is what zero. How do I realize zero? Seventeen over five we divide seventeen over five. Two over five minus two over five, it will give me zero. So the new the new the new value for two over five is what zero. I want to give you an hint. When you locate your key element, every on, on that column, every element that is in that key column will be what? Zero. Assuming, even if I didn't calculate the new value for 2 over 5, I know that it, it, will be, it will give me zero. So, when you locate your key element, after locating your key element, every element that falls on the top or the, below the key element will be what? Zero, if you calculate it. So, that is the reason why I don't stress myself. You are, you are going to get zero. After calculating all this, you are going to get zero. Now, let's get the new value for this zero now. Don't forget, you are still using the same approach. You are still using the same approach. So, the new the new value for this zero will be, zero is which is the whole value. Zero will become the whole value minus the product of the corresponding key row element. The corresponding key row element of zero is one. When you trace it up, the row element, the key, uh, the key row element that 
cos under zero is what one. So I'm going to be having the product of one multiplied by the corresponding key, co key column element is what two over five multiplied by two all over five divided by the key element two over five divided by the key element. The key element is on uh, seventeen over five. So I'm going to be having seventeen all over five. One multiplied by two over five will give me two over five. Two over five divided by the key element, which is what? 17 all over 5. 17 divided by 5. If I change this sign to multiplication sign, the 5 will come up, will become the numerator, and the uh, 17 will become the numerator. They are going to have one, one. At, at the end of the day, they are going to be resulting to two. 0 minus 17, 5 over 17. Uh, no, 0 minus 2 over 17. So the new value will now become minus 2 all over 17. So this is the new value for um the new value for 10 and um, this the new value for zero is now two uh, minus two over seventeen. Now let's go let us get the new value for um one over five. The new value for one over five will be um one over five will become the whole value. So I'm going to be having one over five. 1 over 5 minus the product of the corresponding key um, key go element, which is 4 over 5. 4 over 5 multiplied by the corresponding key column element is 2 over 5. So I'm going to be having the product of 4 over 5 minus, multiplied by 2 over 5. Divided by the key element. The key element is 17 over 5. Divided by the key element 17 all over 5. So, 17 over 5. No, this is 5. So, if you multiply this, 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. 5 multiplied by 5 is 25. So, I'm going to be having um, 8 over 25 in this bracket now. I'm going to be having 8 over 25 in this bracket. 8, 8 over 25. 8 over 25 in this bracket. So if I change this division sign, if, it, if this division sign is changed to multiplication, so I'm going to be having um, 8 over 25 multiplied by, um, multiply, this numerator will become, I will have 5 over 17 like that. 5 all over 17. So 5 year 1, 5 and 25, that will give me 5. At the end of the day, I'm going to be having 8 multiplied by 1. 8 multiplied by 1 is 8. So I'm going to be having, don't forget, 1 over 5. 1 over 5. 1 over 5 minus um, 8 all over 5, 5 multiplied by 17. That's 85. 8 over 85 like that. So I've gotten that. I've gotten this as 1 minus 1 over 5 minus 8 over 85. I'm going to get. Let me write it. Let me write it. Let me write it here. Yeah. 1 over 5. 1 over 5. Minus 8 over 85. The LCM is what? 85. The LCM is 85. So, um, 85 divided by 5. That's 17. 85 divided by 5 is 17. 17 divided by 1 is um, 17. This subtraction sign will be here. It's right there by 5 is um is 1. 1 multiplied by 8 will give me 8. So I'm going to be having 17 minus 8. That is 9. So at the end of the day, I'm going to be having 9 over 85. So I'm going to be having 9 over 85. The new value of x4, which is 1 over 5, is what? 9 over 85. 9 divided by 85. So now, I have gotten the new value of uh, this row. I have gotten the new value of this row. Now, the next thing to do is to construct the, the table of our uh, ZG. 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 I'm going to be having the table of my ZG. The, uh, the table of PJ, the value of the table of PJ will be 10. I still have my 10 in here. 10 is still intact. Let me put the row here. 10. Uh, then x2 is 6 
x3 is 0 then x4 is 0 also now this is the table of my uh, pj let me use a blue marker here uh, here also okay okay now this is the table of my pj now how do i find the table of my zj okay now let us get the value of zj if you want to get the value of zj the value of zj will be the addition of this and this how do we add this we are going to have zj let me put it here zj equals to 6x2 plus 10x1 this is the value of our zj now i'm going to be substituting the value of x2 in each row and the value of x1 in each row to get my the value of zj let me pull a line here so i'm going to be substituting the value of zj for example in this column now in order to get the zj of this column i'm going to substitute 0 as x2 in this in this row and 1 as x uh, x1 in this row so the value of zj in this in this first column will be what 6 into bracket 0 6 into bracket 0 plus 10 into bracket what's the value of x uh, the corresponding value of uh, x uh, x1 is what 1 10 into bracket 1 so I'm going to be having 6 multiplied by 0 is what? 0. Plus 10 multiplied by 1 is 10. So I'm going to be having 10 as the final value of Zg here. So the final value is 10. The reason why I don't calculate the value of Zg for this one, for the real activity is because it doesn't have any PJ. It doesn't have any PJ here. So I don't need the Zg of this. So now let's proceed to the X2. Now, to get the value of Zj for the column X2, I'm going to, I'm, the, I'm still going to use this formula, but the element is going to be changing. The element is going to be changing. The element is going to be changing. Um, instead of 1A, I'm going to have 6 into brackets. Corresponding value in that column will be what? 1 plus 10 into brackets. What is the value of? Or this column is zero, so I'm going to be having six plus one, six plus six times one is six. Six plus what? Ten times zero is zero. So six. I'm going, the value of six in that in that in that state is what six. Please, are you following? Me? Don't um, don't be confused at all. So in order to get the value of Z J, oh, let me put the line here for the slack variable. Slack variable. Slack. Very good. Now let us find the value of Zj for the column X table. Now we are going to be using the same approach, which is this. So instead of the value of my X2 will become 5 over 17. So I'm going to be having 6 over 5 over 17. 6 into bracket 5 all over 17 plus 10 into bracket. What's the value of X1 on that column? The value of X1 on that column is minus 2 over 17, minus 2 all over 17. So I'm going to be having 5 over 17, 6 times 5 is 30. I'm going to have 30 over 17, this plus. Then 10 multiplied by minus 2, I'm going to have minus 20 all over 17. So minus 20 plus times minus will be what? Plus, I'm going to have 30 over 17. Plus times minus is plus, minus, uh, minus. So minus 20 over 17, minus 20 over 17. The LCM is what? 17. I'm going to be having 30 minus 20. 30 minus 20 is 10, 10 over 17. That is the value of my ZJ in this place. 30 over, uh, 10 over 17. 10 over 17. So, let's proceed to calculate the ZJ. The ZJ of this, um, the ZJ of column X4. I'm still going to use the same approach. Okay, let me erase this. The ZJ of column X4, I have 4 over 17 and 9 over 5, uh, 9 over 5 as X2 and X1 correctly, uh, respectively. So I'm going to have 6 into bracket. The value of X2 on column X4 is 4 over 17. 4 over 17 plus 10 into bracket. X1, the value of X1 in column X4 is 9 over, 9 over 85. 9 over 85. So 6 times 4 is 24. 24 over 17 plus 10 times 9 is 90. 90 over 85. 
So 85 and 17, the LCM is 85. It's 85 divided by 17, it, that is 85 divided by 17, that is 5. 5 multiplied by 24, that is 120. 120 plus 85 divided by 5, uh, 85, that is 1. 1 multiplied by 90, that is 90. So 120 plus 90, that is 210. 210 all over 85. So you can reduce the value if you like, and you can proceed, you can put it like that. But in, my, in this case, I'm going to reduce the value. The value is 42 over 17, 42 over 17, 42 over 17, it's only the same as 42, 42, all over 17. So I've, already, I've gotten the value of my ZG. Now let's calculate the value of PJ minus ZG. PJ, PJ minus ZG, PJ minus ZG. So now, the value of PJ minus ZG, for this row, I'm going to have in 10 PJ is here, don't forget. And PJ means the coefficient of our standard objective function. The coefficient of our standard objective function is, is, is known as the value of PJ. Probably if you have not watched the, uh, the first video that I drew up concerning this solution, kindly proceed back to the channel and watch the video. There I solved this question step by step before getting to, the, before getting to this place. So therefore, Kindly go back to the channel and watch the video, the part one of this question. So therefore, so that you will not make any mistake. The value of PJ is here. So for this one, the PJ is what 10 and the ZJ is what 10. The value of PJ minus ZJ will be what 10 minus 10, minus 10 which is which is give me zero. So I'm going to have zero here. Let me go this one. I'm going to be having zero in this place. Zero here. So for for the, for the second, uh, for this column x2, I'm going to be having 6 minus 6. six the value of pj here is what? 6. The value of zj is 6. So I'm going to be having 6 minus 6, which is what? 0. For the third column, the value of zj, uh, the value of P, uh, zj is 10 over 17. Why the value of pj is 0? So 0 minus 10 over 17 will give me minus 10 over 17. So for the next column, the value of pj there is 0 and the value of zj is what? 42 over 17. So the value of pj minus zj will be what? Minus 42 all over 17. Now, I told you, I told you in, when I start calculating the value of zj in this place, I told you that for we to obtain our optimal solution, pj, pj minus zj must be less than or equals to zero. Now, we have gotten the value of our pj minus zj. Now, let's look at the value. Zero is less than or equals to zero. Yes, zero is part. For this one also, is also zero. And this one is negative, this one is negative. Therefore, this is our optimal solution. We have reached a conclusion. We have reached a conclusion. Assuming that we have a positive number here that is greater than zero, we are still going to proceed to the what? Third iteration. But because we have already, we have already reached this, Point. Therefore, this is our uh, final solution because we have the value. We have those values. Those values that we have as pj minus zj here, they are less than or equals to zero. So therefore, we have reached an optimal solution here. Now let's proceed to calculate the value of um, the objective function. Don't forget that our objective function is this: z is equals to 10x1 plus 6x2. And from this table now, the real activity will be our x1 and x2. The real activity here is what? 20. 20 over 17. And from this table, x1, x, x2 is equal to 20 over 17. And x, x1 is equal to what? 60 over 17. So let's come back to our objective function. Substitute the value of x1 and x2. x1 is here. So I'm going to have in this. And x2 is corresponding to 20 over 17. So substitute the value of x2 and x1 on... Um, on our objective function x2 x1 is 60 over 17 i'm going to have it 10 into bracket 60 all over 17 plus 6 into bracket 6 um, um 6 into bracket 60 uh, 20 over 17 so 10 multiplied by 60 is 600 over 17 600 over 17 plus 6 um 6 multiplied by 20 is 
120 uh, over 17, 120, 120 over 17. So the LCM is 17. 17 divided by 17, 1, 1 multiplied by 600, 600 plus 17 divided by 17, that is 1. 1 multiplied by 120, that is 120. So 60, 600 plus 120, that is 720. 720 divided by 17. So the solution is 17, 720. You can proceed to put in the decimal form 720 divided by 17. That is 720 divided by 17. You can put it in the in decimal form or, uh, or in the fractional form, but I decide to put it like this. So the solution to this question, the solution to the question is this. So we have come to the end of the, uh, the solution. Kindly hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you will know when I drop new videos. That is how to solve linear programming using simplex method.